Okay, so it is, uh, we're actually back on a Monday! Yeah! And we have a Dan again! Yeah. As I'm saying this, I'm sitting here concerned that at any moment our internet connection is just going to YouTube. Off. We might have just, just jinxed ourselves and it's going to be like, Bew! I, I can share this. I, I was supposed to have heard back from the supervising technician, the magic Ooh. technician man. Was apparently, this is a magical man who has an entire team of technicians, and they will come out, all of us on site, and they will inspect everything and make sure my stuff is fixed. I was supposed to have heard back to them. Initially, I was told two to four hours. And then when two to four hours pass, and I call tech support again, well, no, 24 hours. So 24 hours pass. Oh, so they just threw in a dash by accident. 24 hours pass, and I call tech support. No, no. 24 to 48 hours. So 48 hours passed, and I call tech support. Oh, wait, we didn't actually escalate the call. They'll call you in 24 to 48 hours from now. It's been over 48 hours since my last call. No You're one's called. You're being hosted by a tech support dude. I know! You know what? If they fix the... YouTube. Great! I just want to know they fixed it. Yeah! I don't... Just... Do just, your little thing and make make the thing go. Just call me and say, hello, this is what the problem was. We fixed it. Have a nice <laughs> day. All right. That's it. Instead, they're just like, maybe they fixed it. Maybe it's an intermittent problem that's going to start again. We don't know. Just maybe something good. Maybe something bad. Grady, what are you doing? You sharpening your claws? You little butt. So yeah, that is, and, and people who are not in the United States, you know, people in the UK are like, well, I've got like five different ISPs I can choose from. If any of them pull that, I'd go to a new one. We can't! That's not really a thing here. It's not a thing here. I mean, your big other choice, actually, I don't even know, like, I'm thinking of cable, because you could go to satellite, but I, there's not satellite internet. There is satellite internet. Is there? Okay. It is very it is. laggy, and it is not good for uploading. And yeah, and if you live in a place where there's weather... Yeah, then there's no internet. Yep, yeah, this time last year when we were in Ireland, and the guest house we were in had satellite TV, and yeah. I'm like, this is a country where it's windy and rainy, always. Satellite TV is like a cruel joke in a country like that. Like, why? Why even offer that service? I could get DSL. You know, remember DSL over the phone lines? Too. I also remember that among a certain subset of dudes, that stands for a different thing. So it always gives me pause. <laughs> it's a whopping 18 megabit per second. Ooh! That's download. Three megabit per second upload. One, two, three megabits all at once. Do you get to hear the cool noise? No. Oh. Well, then what's the point? What's the point? Yeah, I know. I gotta... Yeah, I actually have to drag an old dial-up modem out sometime to see if there's any anyone actually still doing BBSs. Just for the hell of it. Just to see. Is there still a BBS out there? I spent like half of my college hanging out in a BBS. I did too. <laughs> Out of Iowa State University, for some reason. Oh, all right. Well, it is time for the nonsense. We've got a bunch. We have video. We have all sorts of stuff. Let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, we're going to start this week. This is one that was kind of everywhere. It's from, it's from your neck of the woods, near Connecticut. N not quite at you, but it's... it's the, yeah, you know the one. Actually, right near the neighboring town from where I used to live in Connecticut, if it's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> like, really, I know where this place was. Is. Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't actually play the video. <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. The song nice. played, that's all that matters. Yeah. Look, you're lucky you got a show tonight. Okay? Don't shake anything. <laughs> all right, let's 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 get started. Uh, yeah, this is from Connecticut. Connecticut. What the fuck happened here? Yeah. 
fire set. <laughs> field set on fire in Ridgefield to dry it. Police are invest. This is why we don't have children. Police are investigating after a field was doused with gasoline and set on fire in Ridgefield on Saturday. Town of Ridgefield said 24 gallons of gasoline were poured on the field in an attempt to dry way. It's an attempt to dry the field quicker. Town plans to evacuate the infield, place dirt in a safe container, and add fresh, clean soil to the field. Ridgefield High School baseball game was delayed as a result of the incident. Here's the thing, like, if the if the ground is too wet on a baseball diamond, you mm. can slip, or if you try to slide, you won't slide. So, like, it isn't really super safe. Like, right. they do it in the major leagues because there's millions of dollars at stake if they don't finish that game. But when you're dealing with kids, like, you don't want them playing on wet dirt, because if they try to slide, they won't, and that's how knees get dislocated. What's probably worse is if your kid slides in a second and gets a face full of gasoline and ash. You call the game. You call the fucking game. Yeah, like, it's it's not the end of the fucking world, guys. Not only that, not only that. Um, they have to replace all that dirt because it's right. now toxic. It can't, nothing can grow there. They're not growing it's, new. Yeah. Well, they're not growing anything on a baseball diamond anyway. No, but if they're near the, if, if anything Besides nearby, parents. anything nearby in that field that had grass on it. Yeah. Probably doesn't have grass anymore or won't soon. And you had awesome fumes for a while. I'm sure the kids love that. It's going to cost up to $50,000. To fix this bullshit. In addition to however much it cost them to buy 24 gallons of gasoline. That was also $50,000. Fucking morons. <laughs> who, who would know? Okay, I am... I have watched gas prices go up and down over the past few years. And even... It's relatively stable right now. Hoping fucking orange idiot doesn't fuck something up tomorrow. But it's relatively stable at the moment. Even still... The idea of pouring that much gas, that's a full tank of gas for me. Yeah. Plus some. That's a thats a full tank and extra. And like, to dry the dirt. To dry the fucking dirt. That sounds like first-hand experience. It is actually, because I was a baton twirler. And on AstroTurf, you don't slide. So when you try, your knee pops out of joint. It's great. It's one to grow on, guys. Don't try to slide on AstroTurf. It's not going to work out. What's driving me crazy is this was the adults. The yeah, adults were the there. They the, didn't like the idea that the game was delayed, so they were like, we can try that field. And it's not just one or two of them. I got We got a, a little short video here. You can have a look. Um, if it'll work. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's a... There's... I count four or five adults... With yard tools. They're all out there like, this is a great plan, Dave. You got the best idea ever. And like, that's what they, in the major leagues, they literally have giant sweepers that it takes like five guys to run yeah. that like turns over the dirt. They cover the field with a tarp as much as they can. Yeah. And then after they pull the tarp, they like have giant sweepers that turn over the dirt so it's not as wet. This is, this is a problem with I th I I I'm probably I'm gonna get comments, but this is a this is a problem with men. I have to say this here. Y'all think fire <laughs> and explosions is the answer to fucking everything? It's not just that. Because you do. It's not just that. It's like if you get one of us alone, we're more than likely to go. That's a dumb idea. I shouldn't do that. Well, if you get more two more. of us, maybe one of them will call it a dumb idea and not do it. Maybe one will just let the other one do it and laugh at him. They're going to call that one a pussy. If you have five or more men on their own, something stupid is about to happen. Yeah. And it's probably going to involve fire. <sighs> like, you, 
Men, you just, you can't be trusted to administer to yourselves. No! We need baby fucking sitters. You do, though. Oh. Like, he, I don't know if you heard him mutter at, when you read the headline, well, it would work. <laughs> 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 this is why we have cats my own father <sighs> set the dog's ass on fire <laughs> trying to relieve him of a tick I did set my parents house on fire when I was young of course you did because you were basically Damien <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, was it from earlier tonight I screamed all the way through it's a small world you were playing It's a Small World on your video, and I was like, have you ever been on that, Ryan? He's like, yeah. He's like, my sister screamed and cried all the way through the Haunted Mansion. I screamed and cried all the way through that ride. <laughs> my husband, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Let's move on to uh, this guy on his own. Dude on his own completely failed, so he has, he's got no, no excuse <laughs> on this one. I think that's, that's, yeah, that's the link. You can have a look there. Man walks out of store with stolen chainsaw in his pants. Really? Fresno, California. Police in California are searching for a man who was caught on camera stealing a chainsaw from a store by stuffing it down his pants. Happened on, a, at, on Thursday at a hardware store in Fresno. Surveillance footage shows the man pushing the chainsaw down his pants and covering it Will with his jacket. Will you tell people you're pregnant? <laughs> uh, before leaving the business, store owner says the man was last seen leaving in a pickup truck. Police hope someone will recognize the man in the video and report him to authorities. Well, just look for the guy who's walking funny. Yeah. Because that, that goes back to the where you store your gun argument for me. Because those things have blades on them. Motherfucker. And you're just going to, okay, well, good luck. Okay. Good luck, man. They're pointing out, you all laugh, but at work, they're still looking for him. They're going to find him. Yeah. They've got video. They've got make and model of the car. They can narrow that shit down. Just look for the guy bleeding from his crotch while he's walking around town. Honestly, just, he wrapped his jacket around it. He had this thing. And like, he was to oh, no. put his... Any day now. <laughs> he just put his hands in his jacket pockets like I'm subtle. Do you have, did you have like, did you develop a tumor while you were in the store? No. Yeah. Oh my god. Just things that don't go down your pants. <laughs> there are many things that don't go down your pants. I was in the ER once because I cut myself with an X-Acto knife and I was in the waiting area. I was an art student. I have scars all over from X-Acto knives. And I was behind, like I was triaged behind a guy who lost a fight with a chainsaw. And man, that poor dude. They were like, we're going to take him first. I'm like, you better. I'm fine. Wait, lost a fight Butterfly. with a chainsaw? Yeah, he just had pieces all down his arms and legs, just like missing. This poor dude. Like, it looked like, it, it literally looked like he lost control of it. And it just like, yeah, it was bad. And like, he was like, he was sitting up and everything. So none of them were life-threatening. Well, yeah, that's called shock. Yeah, it was just like <laughs> little chunks missing all over the place. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that's why you don't put them down your pants. Jesus fucking Christ original recipe. Jesus Christ. Oh. Anyway. So last week, we had the dude who stole from the baseball team he was administering and then tried to pay it back by robbing a bank. In his government vehicle. And you're like, how can you get lower than that? Oh, you can always get lower. Yep. And uh, we have... we, we it, it, only, only a week later. Only a fucking week later. Father admits to staging a home invasion to cover up his theft 
of daughter's Girl Scout cookie sales. Come on, man. Man in Oregon is accused of staging an elaborate home invasion in an effort to cover up his theft of more than $700 from his daughter's Girl Scout cookie sales. I honestly thought you were going to say he ate all the cookies and was trying to cover the theft of the cookies. <laughs> and I would understand that more. Yeah, yeah. If, if I had a house full of Samoas, I would have some fucking problems. Please say Brian Kocher. I believe that's, that's how you say his name. Couture. Couture. Brian Couture, 40, old enough to goddamn know better, placed the emergency call just before 10 a.m. and reported an unknown individual had entered his home through a sliding glass door. Couture said he engaged in a struggle. Oh, he had an imaginary fight with an imaginary oh, no. man. Before the apparent intruder fled, Police canine unit was dispatched to search for the su suspect, causing panic in s for some area residents. Um, officers say when they arrived at the home, they found Couture unresponsive. There's a difference between unconscious and being unresponsive. Turns out, <laughs> what? That just that that nice shade. <laughs> the difference between being unconscious and unresponsive. Response. Um, That's a nice way of saying he was fucking faking it. <laughs> Turns out there was no home invasion. They claim Couture staged the entire situation. Couture admitted to Forest Grove police investigators the alleged incident was staged. Investigators believe Couture staged the incident in order to conceal the theft of money belonging to non-profit organization that was spent inappropriately. So was your story that they came in and only took... Your Girl Scout cookie money, right? You just happen to have laying around. Not did the they TV. Hunt, did they look for it? They didn't take the TV. They didn't take the Xbox. Right. They didn't take your wallet. They didn't take the wallet. Just, just the Girl Scout cookie money. They were they were on a mission. It was a carefully planned heist. They heard Is about this that. Like a Boy Scout strike team. It's like all right. Was They've this been the fucking red, the Culver City Red Feathers? They've been selling cookies all week. It's we know you. the money's going to be at the house. We know when the money's going to be there. They'll be moving the money between 9 and 10 a.m. Here's what we do. You go around the back. We're going to we're going to break in. We're going to knock the dude unconscious. Can I get his wallet? No. Stick to the plan. We're just <laughs> getting the money. This is like the Sesame Street version of the plot of Widows. <laughs> this is like... <laughs> it's like the town, only worse. <laughs> yeah, kinda. <laughs> Whose bike we take it? <laughs> I just... What the fucking... Dude, come on. Why were you spending... It's your daughter! We got my Culver City Red Feathers joke, huh? I'm disappointed in all of you. Man, I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even steal shit. I feel bad when I when I take Grady's toys away because he's dunking them in his water. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine spend, stealing seven hundred dollars from my daughter. And your daughter sold seven hundred dollars worth of Girl Scout cookies, by the way. Shit, so yeah, like four dollars a box. <clears throat> That's pretty fucking impressive. Maybe you should let your daughter handle the family finances from For now real. on. Because your daughter put in some fucking work. Yeah, she seems like the earner in the household. Yeah. Brian. <sighs> Motherfucker. Asshole. Oh, here's another one. And, um... Oh, if this is not... Uh, I, I Let me speak to your manager. I don't even know what it is. This lady. Holy shit. Oh, I gotta get you the link. There it is. Female inmate walked away from Raleigh work assignment back in custody. Check that picture there. A minimum custody inmate at North Carolina Correctional Institution for Women who walked away from her work assignment was captured in Wayne County Friday morning. Gail Newcomb, 44 last seen on Avent Ferry Road. She was captured around 1.45 a.m. in Wayne County. Um, apparently, she just walked the fuck away. 
She decided. She left. I'm I'm not doing this anymore. I'm I'm not doing this. I'm going home. I'm going home. I I I I've had I'm enough. Like so over incarceration. I it's just it's I'm going home, and I I I don't believe this is not. I I don't believe I should be here. I should not be. I'm going home. I am going home. What the fuck, lady? It's not optional. Four foot six. Four foot six. Yeah, this is just a tiny lady. Well, four foot six and 177 pounds. So she's more than a foot shorter than me, but only 20 pounds lighter than me. <laughs> oh, but Sarah, Jesus Christ. You don't just, it's not. Yeah, it's not optional, man. You can't just leave. And she's what's the smile in her fucking mugshot and shit. Like, do you think Cool Hand Luke would have sat there digging ditches just because he liked it? They're going to come find you. Yeah. They're going to come bring you back. Only when they have to go find you and bring you back, it gets worse. You're not going to be on minimum security anymore. No. You're going to be in the one where they don't let you outside unless everybody goes outside and they carrying the yeah. sticks around and got the nice chain link everywhere it's it's a motif it's not like you're incarcerated until you get tired of it <laughs> i am so done i am so done with jail okay Goodbye. I, like, I learned my lesson okay i'm over it <laughs> i can't even get a decent latte in this place god uh, you can't just fuck off home that's not how that works i think you've fundamentally misunderstood the transaction going on here. You have done yeah. crime and we are taking it out of your high. That's, You'd rather miss the point of jail. That's that's jail, yes. You are, you are doing work to repay the community for the crime. You see? You are picking up the trash on... T I, I, the audacity not even to be willing to just pick up some trash and, and see that you got fucking lucky. Yeah. To be doing that. Because you get to look at things besides the fence. But not anymore! Because you had to be dumb. Oh, this next guy is so dumb, too. Oh, my God. Memphis, Tennessee. Holy crap. This fucker. Man accused of lending car to friend in exchange for meth then reporting carjacking. Dude, fuck you. Man has been arrested after he made a false report about a carjacking. According to the report, officers arrived on the scene. The victim, Joshua Scott, told officers uh, struck him in the face. Uh, he was struck in the face and stole his 2011 Nissan Sentra. Investigators met up with Scott to discuss the investigation of the report. After Scott provided another statement, investigators de determined there were, quote, some inconsistencies. They confronted Scott with evidence determined the report was fabricated. Scott then admitted that he reported the carjacking to cover up the fact he gave his vehicle to a friend in exchange for meth. So did he loan it to his friend or give it to his friend? Because if he loaned it to him, you don't have to cover that up. You can just say, I loaned my friend my car. But also, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah, to, you like loan your friend your car in exchange for meth, and then try to frame him for stealing the car. What? Ever? And look at his smug fucking face in that mugshot. Oh my god, yes. With his tall ass hair, trying to make him look like he's taller than five five. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, Josh. His hair brings him up to 5'8", so... Yeah, you're not fooling anybody. We know that's all jail. <laughs> no, I'm just... This this motherfucker. The, just the audacity is what's killing me here. It's like, hey, buddy. I'll lend you my car. You hit me. You, you hook me up. His friend hooks him up, and he's like, okay, fuck you. I want my car back. 
And literally, that's an excuse you didn't even need because you can just loan your friend. There's no law against loaning your friend your car. You can just do that. Now, of course, adding the meth to the equation. But you never have to mention the meth at all. You can just not say the word meth and be like, yeah, I loaned her my car. The end. But just the... the that is just some... That's some mean bullshit. It's like, I've got the bat, the meth, now I'm getting my car back. And I've got the perfect way to do it, I'll involve the police. Probably seemed like a great idea when he was tripping on meth. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Oh, last one tonight, we have video. This is from uh, Ireland. And Ooh. I'm... So oh dear. <laughs> I'm sort of impressed by the outcome. This What did I do? I've been in America for a year. <clears throat> I haven't been to Ireland since last year. Th th this is actually pretty impressive. Let's let's take a look here. Um <gasps> CCTV footage shows a stolen digger being used to rip a cash machine. Let's start this over from the beginning so everyone can see. Rip a cash machine. From outside a shop in County Londonderry, footage shows the digger driving through a security gate and tearing the machine from the wall. That's amazing. The cash the cash machine was lifted into a uh, Citroen, 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 Berlingo car. Citroen. Citroen Berlingo car. Oh yeah, it's one of those cars they only have in Europe. Which had part of its roof cut off number of masked men were seen in the footage raid lasted just four minutes afterward the car was driven away with the cash machine sticking out of the roof my dad used to drive a digger like that <laughs> we could have been rich <laughs> <laughs> and they leave the digger they, said, the digger? they fucking leave the digger they ditch All it fingerprints Pro I, I guess maybe they were wearing gloves. I mean, like, does everybody own one of those in Northern <sighs> Ireland? Because they feel like they can trace it. Um, Digger was stolen from a building site further down the road before being driven to the garage. Last week, there were two separate incidents of machine, uh, of cash machine thefts. Please warn, there could be several gangs involved in the theft of cash machines in Northern Ireland. Shop owner Martin O'Kane says, I probably won't get another cash machine. That will be the local community losing out. I wouldn't either. No, oh, they took down <laughs> half your fucking shop. They took the wall out. What the fuck? What in the and then you have the, the problem. How the fuck do you get into that cash machine? I mean, I guess they must have figured that out if they're stealing multiples of them. I love how they just, they smashed in, four minutes, got the shit left. They had a car with the roof cut out. They dropped the boom. They're gone. They had a plan. They, I they, mean, the car with the roof cut out isn't exactly subtle. <laughs> I feel like somebody's going to notice that. I'm just, I'm sitting here going, imagine if these guys had, you know, access to better targets. This is, I wonder if this is near Omega and Diamanda, because they're in Derry. Yeah. Now I want to ask them, like, are you near the, the Digger ATM theft? They're going to be like, yeah, that's that's our petrol station. Fuck that guy. I mean, on the one hand, dude, you 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 smashed the poor guy's station. That caught what you did cost more than anything you got out of that ATM machine. Yeah. But on the other hand, I'm like, wow, you guys actually pulled that shit off. I mean, they had a plan and they executed. Yeah, it. Yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. They didn't get their faces on camera. Nope, they had masks. So, I mean, you're a dick, but good job. <laughs> that's that's just like, god damn. Why are you doing this? You could be doing so many other things. I know, you actually can follow steps of a plan. You could have a legitimate life. Seriously, because Jesus Christ, look, you managed to convince three other dudes to go along with this shit. You laid out and acted on this big, got away with it just for an ATM. 
Dude, Maybe it's Amanda's minions. Dude, you what you need to go into private equity is what you need to do. <laughs> Put together a hedge fund, Ponzi that shit, you will be know. fine. I don't know if hedge funds are really a thing in Ireland. Mother They're fuck. not they're not quite as disgusting capitalists as we are here. <laughs> Computer Ronan says, I can't even get a stuffed animal from a crane. These guys got a whole ATM. <laughs> <laughs> That's the business you should go into. You will clean <laughs> up at the arcade. Oh. That weirded us out when we were there. They call what we call arcades, they call casinos. So, like in my dad's hometown, Valley Bunyan, there was something called a casino, and it wasn't open during the daytime. But then at night, it was open, it was full of children. And we were like, why is the casino full? Of and they're like, well, who else would go in there? And we're like, not children. Not and then we took a closer look and we're like, oh, it's an arcade. <laughs> but we were very confused for a few minutes. No, dude, dude, this. I mean, I'm torn here on the one hand. Fuck. I know, because we usually see such stupid fucking crap. <laughs> We see people steal a bulldozer and then fuck it up. <laughs> like, these guys executed. Yeah. That's kind of impressive. I'm like, on the one hand, it's like, fuck. On the other hand, it's like, fuck. Because now that gas station's not going to have an ATM, and that poor guy has thousands of dollars of damage to his property, and yeah. fuck you. Jesus Christ. Irish ingenuity, everybody. I guess the first thing we yeah the first thing we learned this week is crime in Ireland is is you know they're good at it. I guess to know how to do crime. Goddamn, <laughs> we probably shouldn't say that. But I mean that's the most impressive crime story we've had in a while. I think that's the yeah. that that is the most impressive since that. Uh, well, I'm interested to see if there are people that get mad at me for saying we Irish because I'm American. And there are Irish people that have attitude about that, but this is this is the most impressive since that fourteen year old girl who called the pizza guy and stole his car. Yes, <laughs> I mean, we kind of have to respect the people that deliver. I know, right? Because we get so many people that were like, "Oh, honey, no." Speaking of "oh, honey, no," um, don't try to go back on a deal when meth is involved. Never get in a, what is it, with a Sicilian? When Never get in a land war in Asia. Or... Yeah. Ah, I just, what the, no, no, no. If meth is involved, the police should not be. If meth is involved, you're already wrong. Yeah. <laughs> There's um, no upside to that drug. We've learned that your jail sentence is not optional. Nope. You can't opt out. There's no checkbox. There's there's no end user license agreement that you can just sort of no I'm not no no it's not optional it's it's not fucking optional. Um, we've learned that maybe sometimes your kids are better at money than you are. Yeah, and you know, basic critical thinking. Yeah. <laughs> we've learned that. Chainsaws don't go in your pants. I don't know why we... This seems a bit remedial at this Who point. Who has to learn that? Who has to learn? Don't put the chainsaw in your pants. That seems... Yeah, that's that like seems fairly obvious to me, and I don't have external tackle. That's like the first thing you learn after you, you become introduced to the concept of chainsaw. This is a chainsaw! And the first thing that should go in your head goes, Wow, I shouldn't put that in my pants. That doesn't go there. Is it, though? Is that the first thing you think? Well, it should be. I mean, I've never held a chainsaw, so... Finally, we've learned that fire is not always the solution. No. Although, going back to that, I feel like if I had external tackle, my first thought about a lot of items would be whether or not it belonged anywhere near them. But yeah, fire... Fire is a sometime solution. Yes. 